the children of Israel, they left Ramesses, went to Sukkoth. They left Sukkoth. They came here to Pi Hariath, Mikdal, and they encamped, and they encamped opposite to Mount Safan, or Baal Safan. They left there, came to Etham, left Etham, they went to Mara. Tomorrow they went to Elam. And in Elam, that's where the 12 springs, that's where they're located. And this is Elam. They left Elam. And when they left Elam, they came into the wilderness of Zin. And they left that location in the wilderness of Zen. They journeyed south and came to the Val River crossing. The Val River, this is the river that they crossed. And they crossed the river, they journeyed, then they made an encampment, they left that encampment and came to Dafka. This is Dafka. Dafka. They left Dafka and they journeyed. They came here to Alush. They made an encampment here. They left Alush. This is the Exodus route of the original black Jews. They left Elish, came to Rephidim. And they left the wilderness of Zen and entered the Sinai wilderness. They came into the Sinai wilderness. Mount Sinai is located, the original, historical, ancient, and authentic Mount Sinai. And Moses died on Mount Abarim and it was up to Joshua to take the children of Israel into the promised land. This is Israel. This is the true land and location of Israel. This is the land that the Most High promised the original black Jews, the Ivory people, commonly called Hebrews. This is the location that the Most High gave, promised, and kept his promise, fulfilled it. This location is Namibia, Southwest Africa, located below the equator, below the Tropic of Capricorn. This is it here. This is Israel. The real historical Israel. The one that we find in Scripture, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, and in history. This is it here. Israel is not located in the Middle East. Israel was never located there. The Middle East is Southwest Asia. All of those geographical land mass, the West and the East of, of uh, South Asia, that land, that territory is one populated and filled with cave people. Cave people. And it is those people who are doing their best to lay claim to the true location of Israel as theirs. 
but Namibia, Southwest Africa. This is the real location of Israel. And in this land, in this historical land that is kept hidden, this is where you will find the original Asia. Asia is not located where we say it is located today. Asia is not in Europe. Asia is was never the territories of where China, Japan, Russia, and all the other nations are located. That's not Asia. That territory, that location, is stolen history, stolen black history, stolen everywhere history, stolen original black Jews history. You see, this is the real Asia in scripture and in history. And it is divided in two sections, Asia Major and Asia Minor. Asia Major is Upper Galilee. And Asia Minor, that's called Lower Galilee. All of this is what the original black Jews referred to Galilee and they also call it Asia. This is it. This is where you're going to find Asia. In the real Israel, the real location in Namibia. This is where you're going to find Galilee. You will also find Galatia. You're going to also find all the seven churches listed in the book of Revelation also find Phrygia and here you're going to find the 12 tribes the tribe of Asher also Mycia, Smyrna, Constantinople, Lydia you're going to find the uh, tribe of Naphtali as we go to look down you're going to find the uh, Lebanon the snow-kept Lebanon as well as the so-called anti-Lebanon Mount Ararat as well. Syria is located here. Paphlagonia as well. All the tribes are here. In this area, the tribe of Zebulun, the tribe of Issachar, the tribe of Dan, the tribe of Manasseh. Shechem is located in this area. Samaria is located here. Samaria was a village, a town, a city as well as one of the ancient names of Israel, the upper kingdom. Israel was divided into two kingdoms, Israel, north kingdom, and Judah was the southern kingdom. As time went on, the name of Israel changed to Samaria, but Samaria was also a town and a village. And this is it here. This is the ancient Samaria, the one that we read in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And you find this in the original land of Israel, Namibia, Southwest Africa. Shechem is located here. This crater that is called the Karos Crater. This is really the crater that was caused by the meteor that the Most High sent to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. This is the location, this is the result, this is the impact of that meteor that exploded twice. The first explosion was when the meteor hit the earth atmosphere. It exploded, and then when it hit the ground, this is the result. It caused a second explosion. And when we look at this trajectory, that explosion went past the Qumran caves and landed here. All, this is where Solomon Gomorrah is located. It landed and rained down fire and brimstone as it is written in scripture. All of that is here in the true land of Israel, the Dead Sea, Sea of Asada, Sea of Arama, that the first century original black Jews 
call Lake Asphalitis. Jericho is here. Qumran Caves, Gilgal, Beth Halal, Bethlehem. All of these and more are located here in Namibia, Southwest Africa, because this is the true location and land, the promised land called Israel, Mount Abarim. This is where Moses went and he stood in this location, the highest point of Mount Abarim, which is called Pisgah. This is where Moses stood. Tribe of Reuben is here, tribe of Simeon. And this is the tribe of Judah that we're looking at here. Above Judah is Benjamin, Beersheba, Jerusalem, Hebron. This is Hebron here. This is the true land of Israel. You will find all these cities, mountains and rivers. Golgotha, located right there. The Emmaus pair, two disciples, walking back to Emmaus. After the event, the historical event of the resurrection of Yahshua, these two disciples, they were walking back, walking from Jerusalem and going back to Emmaus. Well, Emmaus is located behind this mountain range here. This mountain range is uh, the Arabia. Also, it is called the Shephelah. But the Emmaus, the city, the village of Emmaus, is located behind this mountain range. This is where the two disciples they were going back home. And Joshua appeared with them, walking with them to Emmaus. And he, when they got to close to their home, Joshua made as though he was going to continue walking. And they stopped him and asked him to come and stay with them. Now, all three of them was going to this location. Emmaus is located here. This geographical region and area is Emmaus. And we must keep in mind that Emmaus was destroyed and burnt by Hadrian. You see, Emmaus is one of the cities of Judah. And according to the prophecy in Jeremiah chapter 9 11, Jerusalem and Judah are supposed to be desolate and uninhabited. And all of that was fulfilled in two ways. The first way was the 70 AD destruction of Jerusalem. The second wave was the 132 AD destruction of the remaining cities of Judah. And one of the remaining cities of Judah is the city of Emmaus. And it is possible that this could be Emmaus due to the residue of burntness. But it's certain that Emmaus is located in this region. And this is another residue of burntness here and here and over here. But this is where the two disciples, along with Yahshua, this is where they were walking to Emmaus. And with that, we also find in the true location of Israel, the Sinai Wilderness, Seir, Idumea, and Edom, excuse me, and Moab is located right behind the Mount Eberim. This is the uh, Moabite uh, Moab location. This is Moab, some of the remains of Moab, the kingdom of Moab, that is covered up with modern housing and structures. This is Moab here, the ancient historical kingdom of the Moabites. That we see the old perimeters and borders and imprints and impressions left in the earth 
and it, it is in the location where the historical kingdom of the Moabites was and is located and all of the modern housing and features are in this same area for the sole purpose of covering up hiding this ancient kingdom because see we have thieves involved the ones who are descendant of the Kahuni, the Tahuni, the Kalman these entities their descendants they stole all of the history of the original black Jews as well as all of black history and they hijacked it and located it in the so-called Middle East into Southwest Asia and so it became necessary for them to hide the true locations with modern features they covered it up they covered up the old with the new but this is where the ancient Moabite kingdom is located behind the Mount Aberdeen as we see here this is where Moab kingdom is located this is Mount Aberdeen but the kingdom of Moab it extended further out where all of this was the Moabite territory all of this this is the promised land the tribe of God Ephraim Haran Ur the beginnings of Abraham this is the kingdom of Ur covered up mass concealed hidden with the place name Leonardville but this is Ur this is where Abraham had his beginnings and Ur sits immediately east of the Nassau River another place name used to hide conceal and cover up the Euphrates River all of this and a lot more history is found in its true location Namibia Southwest Africa this is Israel the real one of history. This is where you're going to find the true location of the Assyrian kingdom and empire located east of the Tigris River that is really called Hedekal but covered up with a place named Black Masal. 30 miles west of the Assyrian kingdom is the Babylonian kingdom located on both sides of the Euphrates River. All of this is located in Namibia, Southwest Africa, and a lot more. This is Israel. These are the anti-Lebanon, the Abana River. The Farpar River runs south of the Abana. Damascus is located here. The Kingdom of Iran called Syria. This is the true location of Syria. This is Antioch. This is where the original black Jews, this is where they first were called Christians. And this the location here. This is Syria. This is the ancient original name, Aram, that has been changed to Syria. And Antioch was its capital. This is it here. All in Israel true location of Israel, Namibia, Southwest Africa. This is the real one here. A ram covered up with the place name Winhook. In this location, we find the true borders of Upper Egypt. Thanks to the I, he extended the borders of Upper Egypt all the way to the Euphrates River and then he went east, excuse me, he went west. He went west to the kingdom of Aram. These are the true borders of Upper Egypt and it contains a lot of history and true information. And that became necessary for the Caucasian to remove Upper Egypt from all maps. After the scramble for Africa, there was no more Upper Egypt on any maps. Only Lower Egypt is found on all maps today and even with Lower Egypt the borders have been diminished 
Lower Egypt in ancient times was much larger than what it is now. But this is the true borders of Egypt, the two lands, the divided land. And you find that in Namibia, Southwest Africa. You will not find that in the Middle East, Southwest Asia. This is Israel, the Sea of Galilee. It's located here, covered up with the place name Hardep Reservoir. The Sea of Galilee is fed by the Jordan River, which is covered up by the place name Fish River. This is the real one here, shaped like a triangle. And that triangular shape is the meaning of Kinneret. Park. And hidden in plain sight is the word harp and hardel. If you remove the D and the A, you will get the meaning of Kinneret, Park, H A R N P. But that is hidden in plain sight in the place name Hardep. So this is the original Sea of Galilee. The one in the so-called Middle East is a man-made lake. And this is the city, the village, the town that Mary of Magdala is from, who is commonly known as Mary of Magdala. This is the city of, of Magdala. Magdala is covered up with the place name Marienta. This is its true location, located in Namibia. Southwest Africa, which is the true location of Israel. This is Israel. This is it here, the real one of history. This is the one where the 12 disciples, this is where they live and had their being. They live and reside in this land, in this location in this territory, in this city, this hill city called Hebron. This is where Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 tribes, the 12 sons, this is where they were. The 12 sons of Jacob, along with his daughters. In Hebron, they also were located, they live here in Beersheba, Big hill city, heavily populated. They live here as well. When Abraham left Egypt, he journeyed south to Mamre. Mamre is located in Hebron. This is Israel, our land given to us by the Most High. We have to keep in mind that the children of Israel, when they left Goshen, they made their way to this location, the Promised Land. And the Bantus, the children of Israel, they are Bantus. The word Bantu is coined by a Caucasian. And the word Bantu means the people. That phrase, the phrase the people is far more important than the term Bantu. You see, it's the phrase the people that is scriptural. Bantu is not. The phrase the people we find in the Old Testament scriptures. We find that in the phrase chosen ones or chosen people. And the the Kwe Kwe people. Kwe Kwe means men of men, or people of people, the people. So the, the Kwe Kwe, they are our brothers and sisters. But the Bantu, that phrase, that means the people. And again, we find that in scripture. We find the phrase the people in scripture. It, it is uh, written in scripture in the sense of the, the chosen people of God. My people who are called by my name. So we constantly have that epithet of people, a certain group of people that are put high above all other people on earth. 
And these people, they are identified with the phrase, the people, or people, or sometimes my people. And that is called Bantu. And one of the main misconceptions of the origin of Bantu, of the Bantu people, is that the Bantu people came from the Congo. The Bantu people did not come from the Congo. We have to keep in mind that the land of Africa was vastly different than it is in our time. You see, the borders were changed. The Congo is a result of Scramble for Africa. Prior to Scramble for Africa, there was no such thing as a Congo. And since that is the case, then how did the Bantus come from the Congo when the Congo did not exist? The Bantu expansion happened around 2500 BC, anywhere around that time period. There are a lot of scholars, a lot of Caucasian scholars that did their best and some still try to this day placed the Bantu expansion around 1,000 years ago. And that is not the case. You see, the Bantus, which are the every people, the Hebrews, the Bantus are the people of the scripture, the original black Jews. These people, many parts of their history is connected to and tied up with the Egyptians. And so the Bantus, the every people, they left Goshen. And when we look at Goshen, Goshen expands the countries of Botswana, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. And this is Zambia. Zambia is connected to the Congo. This is the Congo. This is its borders. All of this. And this is Zambia, all this territory here. This, what we're looking at, all of this is a result of Scramble for Africa. This did not exist when the Hebrews were in Goshen. You see, Goshen is all of Upper Egypt. The part that we call the Congo part here, this is the Congo. This exists and this is Upper Egypt. The Congo is in Upper Egypt. And the territory that we call the Congo is connected to Zambia. And all of this is Goshen. This is this is what the the pharaohs in scripture they call all of this is Goshen. It's just that the Hebrews Pharaoh did not put the Hebrews all throughout Goshen. He made sure they were far away from Egyptians' life. And so he put them all the way to the southernmost border of Upper Egypt. He put them all the way down here because he did not want them around the Egyptians because the Egyptians were vegetarians and the Hebrews were meat eaters. That means that the Hebrews were eating and sacrificing the gods of the Egyptians. You see, the Egyptians, they held all cattle, all animals, even insects. They held these things to be various gods. But the Hebrews, being meat eaters, they were eating the kettles, which means they were eating the gods of the Egyptians. The Hebrews, they were sacrificing the kettle, which means they were sacrificing the gods of the Egyptians. And all of that became an abomination to the Egyptians. This is why we find the phrase in the Old Testament scriptures that the 
Hebrews are detestable to the Egyptians because the Hebrews were eating and sacrificing the gods of the Egyptians and because of that that's the reason that Pharaoh put them all the way down to the end borders of Upper Egypt all the way down here but keep in mind Goshen is all of this all of this is Goshen and how do we know that? we know that from the words of the Pharaoh himself that says that Goshen is the best land for cattle when you look at Zambia, Zimbabwe, the Congo all of this is green this is all greenery grass, leaves this is the best land for cattle we are viewing it with our own eyes all this greenery is the best land for cattle and these those are the words of the Pharaoh himself the same thing that the Pharaoh said is what we are seeing with our own eyes through satellite so all of this is Goshen but the Pharaoh put the Hebrews at the southern part of Goshen all the way down here and what does all that mean? It means this. It means the Bantus did not come out of the Congo because this did not exist during the time when the Hebrews were captives in Egypt. There was no such thing as the Congo, no such thing as Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana. These things are the result of Scramble for Africa. That means the Bantus, they came out of Goshen they came out of Goshen because the history of the Bantus are connected to the history of Egypt as well as being connected to Abraham, Isaac, Isaac and Jacob those three patriarchs they always went to Egypt that means the history of the Bantus the history of the Bantus is connected to Egypt that means the Bantus came out of Egypt this is the Bantu expansion, not from the Congo. The Bantu expanded from Goshen. And once more, the Congo is a result of scramble for Africa. That means it did not exist before scramble for Africa happened. There was no such thing as the Congo. 1000 BC, there was no such thing as Congo. No such thing as Zambia, Zimbabwe, these things did not exist. So how can the Bantus come from the Congo if they did not exist? But that's a piece of information, historical information, historical fact that is overlooked.